shot in the arm and the leg, both nearly blown off. Nearly. Of course, here's my pain meds. Since then, what's left has left him searching for relief. It is just the starting point. Opioids, cannabis oil, injections, acupuncture, anything, everything. Ready? Ready. Excellent. Ready. Yes. Action. Well, hello there, my beautiful internet friends. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me and for joining us today. I'm very excited to bring you a special guest today. This is my new friend, Joshua Nolan. He is a fellow amputee with quite a story. I uh, learned about him a few months ago and we've been communicating via Instagram and Facebook and we finally got to meet up in person today. Yay! Yes! <laughs> Actually. So I'll just start off by asking um, Josh, how did you how did you become an amputee? Because you have quite a story. Well, I mean, unfortunately, it's a it is a, you know a sad story. Yeah. Obviously, like you know, every amputee story is pretty much sad. But uh, <laughs> so uh, I was in the uh, Aurora theater shooting. Yeah. That happened almost seven years ago, and uh, I was with my two closest friends during the midnight showing of the Dark Knight Rises, where James Combs came into the theater and shot up the place. Yeah. And uh, fortunately I got shot twice. I was shot in the arm and I was shot in the leg and I was with my two closest friends that came back from their honeymoon actually that yeah. same night. And uh, him and I, we used our bodies to protect his wife. And luckily though, I got the brunt force of all the, the shots and they came out uh, decently unscathed. Yeah. So you ended up shot twice. Twice. You said. Okay. Yeah. What was the chain of events immediately after that? Well, I mean, once the shooting finally stopped and they finally got me to, you know, the hospital. Yeah. I was in a hospital. I was hospitalized for uh, three weeks and I had uh, five different surgeries. Uh, doctors did a great job. They were able to save my leg during that time. Uh, yeah. But uh, um, fortunately, uh, after the uh, uh, recovery um, was coming across, I had to walk with a cane and I suffered from major chronic, you know, pain in my leg and neuropathy yeah. in my right arm. So after about five years of multiple surgeries, pain managements, multiple doctor's visits, we, the doctors believed that amputation was going to be just the best solution when it comes to having, providing me the best quality of life. So yeah. two years ago, uh, we decided to go through the amputation surgery and we amputated my left leg. You know, I made the decision as well under obviously different circumstances, but it's such a weird position to find yourself in. It is. It making is. <laughs> the call to remove a body part. Yeah, honestly, it's not something that you don't really think about. It's yeah. obviously it's not a decision that you really want to make, but no. you know, uh, I mean, honestly, the only thing that I, I, the biggest reason why I decided to go for it is, you know, better quality of life. You know, I'm young, I'm strong, I can be able to handle it now compared to, you know, when I'm in my 50s or 60s or even yeah. later where they had no choice and I won't, I won't be able to handle it at that time. So I'm, I'm like, yes. I was happy to be able to just get it done now, get it over with. And honestly, it's been the best decision I have because my quality of life has, you know, been increased tremendously. <laughs> That's really good to hear. You have no idea what it's going to look like on the other side of... No. of I mean, because there can be phantom pain, there can be yes. so many variables. Yeah, I haven't suffered from any type of phantoms and, um, you know, pain really? at all. Knock on wood so far. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. No way. Yeah. That's awesome, yeah. actually. I, I had some odd phantom sensations where yes. I'm like, why do my toes feel like they're crisscrossed yes. <laughs> and I can't undo them? That's about it. And they're stuck there. <laughs> and they're stuck there. so bizarre. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no way. Because I, I wonder, I've always wondered about that because, mm -hmm. um, I've heard from people too that had, I'm not sure the proper term is, but more like the traumatic amputations where like you, you right. wake up and you it's have gone. no idea and it's yes. gone. The but shock is there. So yeah. much harder on your nervous system yes. and uh, you know, a lot of different things yeah. obviously because you well, have no, no clue. Your brain hasn't able to catch up with what's happening yeah. and you're you're looking and you're like, and you're still like, it's gone. It's, it's, it's not there. What happened? Yeah. And, but compared to our situations, we're knowing that's going to happen. So we yeah. are mentally prepared and our, you know, our brains are kept up. But obviously the nerve systems have to, you know, do their thing. And that's, that, I mean, that's a whole new situation, that, you know, and it's on self, yes. honestly. <laughs> so. When I, I think I watched one, um, one of the news stories on you and it was something that was really interesting to me because it was very similar to my story when I actually made the decision is mm -hmm. you were walking to some extent before mm -hmm. your surgery. I mean, obviously not like, obviously not walking without pain, but if someone looked at you from the outside, they might not be like, oh, obviously the best idea is to, you know, cut your leg off. Was it hard to explain that to people around you? Was it hard to explain your decision or was it at the point where this is what you needed and it was just, um, everyone was on board? Mostly everybody that I talked to are pretty much on board. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, I was definitely one of those that kind of hid the pain. Yeah, like I, exactly. you know, so like I didn't want to express it, you know, all the time. So yeah, yeah I mean, a lot of people will see me walk with or without a cane, but you know, yeah. I had to walk with the cane. That was the most comfortable. And, uh, but sharing that kind of pain with everybody that wants to come to, up to you and ask and be like, hey, why, yeah. <laughs> you know, sort of thing. So you, you know, sometimes you just kind of get over with, you know, saying the same thing over and over again. Yeah. But, uh, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, the pain was more on the inside than shown on the outside, yeah. which is definitely something that people will never understand because they will never, you know, hopefully will never have to go through that. Yeah. So it's definitely one of those invisible, you know, pains that people will never understand unless they actually, you know, ask the right questions. <laughs> yeah, right. Which can get exhausting. <laughs> yes, <too. laughs> it sure can. It sure can. <laughs> you went through something where obviously at the, the same moment you experienced severe physical trauma and severe mm -hmm. emotional trauma at the same time yep. i don't think is ever a question of like what's what's worse because they're both um catastrophic to some extent but what has the i'm not even sure the right way to ask this question but what has the process been like going through both of those at the same time where what you physically experienced is related to what you've you know mentally and emotionally experienced mm -hmm. well i think it's definitely different it's, it's always going to be different for each person so depending on that person's personality types it can definitely weigh from one side to the other sure yeah um i, I mean i think with my military background experience yeah um, i was able to deal with certain ptsd aspects that maybe somebody that didn't have a military background or just you know like you know like yourself or or, yeah. or whatever don't know how to be able to you know react yeah. and it can be you know catastrophic on either side uh my ptsd was you know i think it was still it was still there but it was very limited because I, I knew how to be able to you know manage it you know decently well because being with my military brothers and sisters it's something that you're talked about and you train for you try to get mentally prepared for it because you never know when it's going to happen still didn't mean that i was in a perfect condition even oh, though uh, that's not something you get over yeah no it, you never get over <laughs> no. it at all i mean uh, july is my worst month every single year yeah. because it's it, oh, it, oh, it comes around every single year hmm. yeah learning how to manage it it takes time and patience and obviously you have to find the proper resources that you know that can help you specifically yeah it uh, uh, I mean, if it's just being around friends, if it's seeing a professional therapist, you know, if it is medication, if you know a specific yeah. medication does help you, then, you know, that's fantastic. You just got to find that right resource that, you know, that can be able to assist you and you only. Yeah. And uh, m me personally, it was my real close friends and the family that I have around me. And then knowing that I have two boys and I, I raised completely on my own, yeah. like I don't have time to wallow in my own self-pity trying to reach or try to fix things they they need their dad now they can't wait for me so yeah. they were my you know huge inspiration to be able yeah. to move forward and be able to be where i'm at today <laughs> yeah instead of staying like yep. in just and only oh yeah the depth of everything yeah and it's hard it's hard to get over that hump too yeah. when you you know something traumatic's happened to you it's it's some you know you can sit there and wallow in that pity in a long time and it's yeah. it's it's tough it's a it's a heavy you know burning the, the the bear on your shoulders and it's it doesn't it's not easy it's not an easy step to be able to take the bill to get better yeah and it doesn't happen overnight either it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience and a lot more falls you know, yeah. you know, and a lot more disappointments before you actually reach to where you're happy. Even, even, even still to this day, I still have disappointments in myself, but yeah. you know, I look at them as just the experiences that I know that I need to fix, that I know I can be able to get over. <laughs> I look at your story, the, the pieces of it that I know and the conversation that we've had, and I know that you express something that's really important to you is living life yes. after you've been through something yep. so outside the norm of what anyone would ever expect to go through, what you ever want to go through. Mm -hmm how what does that look like to you when i think about the stuff that i do um you know all of the physical um, exercises that i do the yeah. running the uh the outdoor plays and everything else there those are just things that it's just another obstacle it's like you know can i still do it you know yes. and if i can still do it i know i need to because it, it's something it, it was part of my life before my amputation yeah. and i still want to make sure it's still part of my life even after the amputation yeah. and it was my it's my personal joy that really gives it to me and it gives me that extra strength strength to know and I can still and I can do it again. I think that that's um, that's a conversation I've, I've had with a lot of people too that for me like 
with the emotional and like mental trauma that I went through, it was finding a, a MMA class. Like I did MMA for two oh, years, wow. a long time ago. And like if I could make it every day to six o'clock to go to Carlos's boxing class, like that's okay. I could like make it through. I could like find you know through the the midst of the darkness on uh -huh. that day. So that, don't that mess with you then. Like, <laughs> so I'm alright. I'm alright. Right. right it was like, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, um, it brought me so much joy and it was like one thing that brought me joy where I didn't really necessarily think that anything could anymore. I almost feel like sometimes it's a process of collecting those things that are still it is okay and then you find more joy in yep. them and you... Yep, and actually I think you kind of respect it a little bit more too because you didn't realize how much it made you happy <laughs> until like, you know, when you lost your leg and you think that it's like, oh, I'm never going to do this ever again. Yes. You know, there was a, there was a time when I was thinking like, oh, I'm never going to run again. There's, you know, I'm never going to be able to do anything that used to be fun in my life. You know, innovations when it comes to prosthetics is just absolutely amazing. Like it, there yeah. really is no limits anymore. You can still do, you know, what you want and even more. And there's so many other people that are so much more even inspirational than even myself that do such it's like great endless, heights. It, just, it really, it if you want to really find is. someone to look up to, you can, oh, yeah. you can find yeah, them. Yeah, from climbing Mount Everest to, you know, yeah. doing these just amazing feats. And I'm like, wow, okay, I have no excuses. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I really don't, I really don't. Cause I mean, I still remember the day that I knew it was, it was my excuse. I was actually, I was in a in a grocery store and I saw this men's fitness health magazine and yeah. he was, his name is Noah Galloway. Oh, and, uh, I, I, I know him. Yes, yeah. yes, he lost his arm and his leg, and he here's this you know amazing physique guy on the you know the front cover of Men's Fitness yeah. Health magazine. I'm like, so I grabbed it and I read his story, and I was just amazed. And that was the moment I knew I can be able to start doing something for myself. That's I started so to, cool. I started getting off my pain meds. I started trying to work out, yeah. and I followed him, and he was he was my personal inspiration that made, that really actually helped me uh, where I'm at today. That's so cool. Like yeah. just in a grocery store one yep. day and you you just come across it yep. you're losing your limb obviously was related to the trauma that you experienced was, was making that choice to like get rid of it did that feel liberating in any way no it took it yeah, took, it took a year it no yeah because when we first talked about it and you know discussion of amputation i'm like this is going to be probably the best result if you yeah. if you like if you want a better quality of life this is the best result yeah we can keep on trying more and more but guarantee this is going to be the best result if you want a better quality of life yeah it took me a year just to be able to tell myself this is what's going to happen and i feel like yeah. i exhausted all my resources that i felt like i you know i've done to get to my points like okay amputation is gonna have to be it yeah we're going to have to go through this i think it's kind of important to exhaust all those it is. other options yeah because it's a decision you never want to like what yeah the, what the heck yeah because you can't take it back no. <laughs> you can't you can't so you have so yeah so don't think you know amputation is the only thing that's going to happen you, you got to yeah. talk to your doctors find out you know get second opinions see other people you know exhaust all the resources that you can be able to find and of course you can afford yes. <laughs> yeah that's the other thing <laughs> Don't drown yourself in debt, yeah. <laughs> you know, trying to find the miracle mir miracle cure because yeah. there's not. There, yeah. I mean, even amputation is not a miracle cure. No, it comes with its own response, its own problems, its own pains. <laughs> yeah. Were there any surprises, like good or bad, after like in the first few months after amputation, or I guess even the first two years? Oh yeah. I mean, there's definitely going. Uh, I mean. The first six months was, you know, a bunch of setbacks, you yeah. know, back to the hospital, back to getting this done, getting this fixed, you know, because I had a hematoma, I had the oh. bone spur, yeah. the socket didn't fit, you know, fit properly, I was bleeding everywhere, you know, just like, ah, oh, it's like, Great. when is this going to be done? I mean, it's like, it's like, I thought this was supposed to be make it better, and I felt, and there was a point where like, I thought this was going to get even worse, but yeah. I, I kept, and you know, I was just at that point where I was just, I was just tired, but once, you know everything was finally healed and you know the multiple visits to my process you know to my uh, prosthetist uh, we finally found something that worked perfectly for me and then you know once i got it and everything was healed up everything just started looking forward from there <laughs> yes and of course it's not perfect we still have to make small little changes here and there but that comes with being you know an amputee you had to you know it's not you it's know never here's static. your leg it's perfect now it's not it's it's, it's like having a car you constantly have to go and get oh, it checked yeah. on <laughs> it might be good for a few months but then like something starts clicking and making yep. weird noises exactly like, oh, okay. it's like oh that bolt's not supposed to be there <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> it's like why is my foot you know turned that direction not the other way it's like screws are loose literally <laughs> when it comes to more of like the the mental emotional side of things what mm -hmm. what have been some empowering or helpful or challenging or positive things for you in getting to a healthier place you know I went on some social media sites and I started kind of looking yeah. around for people that 
you know do amazing things in bright you know prosthetics yeah. and even just people actually that do amazing things even they're you know able bodies oh you yeah know, I, just, I just i was just looking for somebody that kind of gave me that little extra it's like wow that's good it's like i can it's like let's do this let's yes. try it let's try it and so i just kind of look around and i start finding people on social media and I start following them and see what kind of things that they're doing because they they gave me some ideas, they gave me Got some the resources. Exactly. Yeah. They you know they're doing some you know some amazing things and I'm just like okay, all right and like obviously I'm not going to jump right into that you know I had you know start you know baby steps you know yes. I have to work you know go through it you know uh, like uh, one of the biggest things I absolutely love doing um, is you know is running yeah. and I was like I want to go back into running <laughs> you know so I talked to my prosthetist and be like I want to get back into running yeah what can we start doing or how do I can start practicing you know getting into running you know my first running blade and I attended a running clinic that uh, cool. you know and uh, and it was a free you know a free running clinic for amputees yeah and uh, they you know everybody there all the sponsors were providing you know different types of uh, you know running blades and they had all these amazing resources and all these people to talk to and he had you know beginners and advanced you know people that you know you do all the these things all of it all like of it, it. Okay. so I was able yeah. to ask all these questions try all these different types of things and just kind of tried you know, you know running and it just it just empowered people like oh gosh i love the feeling of getting back into my running again because yes. I just it was something i was extremely passionate about when i was able body and now i get to do it again and it's just like oh it's just it's just it's amazing feeling it's that personal natural high you get yes. when you you finally get that feeling back and it's just like oh yeah and then it just went from there <laughs> i totally get that a couple of weeks ago i went to a ninja warrior gym you know like american ninja warrior yeah that show? oh yeah <laughs> and i was like i'm sure i can't do anything here I'm like, I'll just go like for my friend because he like works here. I want to like you know support him or whatever. And I went. And I was able to do so much more than I thought I could. I love that stuff. Like I love like uh, gymnastic stuff or really? stuff that just like oh, pushes you in any way, right? Yeah. And I was able to actually do it. And you, f I mean, I don't know about you, but like I forgot that I was missing a leg. Like I was just doing stuff. I was just being yeah. a person. And, yeah. and you get that high, you know. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, I can do this. I can do stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. um, I think it's very healing. Very. It is. It's very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you need it. You yeah. Do. <laughs> like I went down to the amputee coalition conference. Oh yeah. The one is in Texas, right? Yeah, it was in Texas. Yeah. And I, I, I realized, like, I was like, oh, I've kind of been participating in the outskirts of the EMPT community, but actually immersing myself in it. I was like, I have a hard time with this. Um, it was just challenging to be like, I actually, I do need to ask people for help. These are my people. Like, to really, there, there was sort of like a, a stumbling block there. Did you have any challenges finding and, like, actually engaging in different communities, be it, like, you know, PTSD or amputation or anything like that? Or was it something where you're like, this is what I need? Here we are. That's exactly what it was. Actually, yeah. I had, you know, I, I I know it was something that I needed, and I talked to the right people. At least I, awesome. I talked to like my doctors and my prosthetists, and they were able to direct me to the right people I needed to talk to. Yes. And that's you know how, and that's that's what helped me out. You know, you just gotta know the right people to talk to. You just gotta start from the bottom, work your way up, you know, and then you find that person that's gonna help. Yes. <laughs> you know, if you're one of those that don't like to talk about yourself very much, yeah. you got to be, you know, willing to tell your story a little bit so they know they can help you. Yes. You know, walking up and say, hey, I'm an amputee. Perfect. How can we help? Well, I don't know how I can help. How I can help? Can I help? How can I help you? I'm yeah, like, so. there's a there's a lot of things I can help with, but you know, you're the you're I mean, you're the you know you, so you have to be able to tell them what they can be able to assist you in. Yes. <laughs> because if your drive is to be a mountain climber, you you know they can be able to direct you to people that can be able to help you out with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're just wanting to, if you want to go back into dancing, you know, yeah. there are people that can help you out with that. There, I mean, the resources are out there. There, but you have to make sure you know and they'll ask the right questions to the people that can help you out. And I think, um, like learning the vocabulary to ask for help and right. and mm. going through that process can take a little while, but you okay. just have to participate in. Yeah, I'm still learning the lingo. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's like, would you say a BK? What? What? What's yeah, oh no, I know. Seriously. <laughs> like you need your own little book of dictionaries when it comes to just yeah. acronyms. What is something that you would say to someone who feels like there isn't life for them? after they've gone through something huge for them, something right. whether it be grief or trauma or, or fill in the blank mm -hmm. and doesn't know how to find any kind of light again. It, that, I mean, that is definitely the uh, the darkest end of uh, anybody's path that it's yeah. very challenging to be able to, first you have to learn to accept uh, that what's happened to you has happened and yeah. you can't do anything about it to change. Yeah. <laughs> Once you first, you know, accept that what's happened to you, you had to make that personal sacrifice to be able to want to reach the you know the light. Yeah. And I mean, and that will always come with more challenges on its own. 
Uh, there, there's a specific quote that I, I followed. I'm not a product of my circumstances. I'm a product of my own decisions. <laughs> I can't do anything that's happened to me. It's happened. I accepted it. I, it's my decision to be able to become a better person. Yes. Because <laughs> nobody's going to do it for you. <laughs> there are people out there that's going to love you. Mm -hmm. And there's always going to be somebody that's going to want to help. <laughs> yeah. You just got to reach out and be able to get the help. <laughs> there's always a point you're turning around. Yep. I, I always think. a point. What is one thing that you're working towards or shooting for like looking forward to in uh well, I mean, you're a very physical person you're big into crossfit and doing stuff, so what's, what's that thing you're hoping to do soon well i mean there is definitely so there's a few races that I want to do over the summer, uh, like okay. uh, some obstacle races, like uh, Spartan. Uh, I've, oh, I've been, this looks so cool. <laughs> uh, I've done, so I did Spartan races before oh, cool. the shooting, and I want to get back into it again. Yeah. Spartan races, uh, some uh, 5Ks, some 10Ks, half marathons, and then next year, uh, my goal is to compete in a race called the Dopey Challenge, which is held in yes. Florida at World, uh, at, uh, World Disney. <laughs> and that's a lot of running in a few days, isn't it? Yes, it is. It <laughs> is. It's, it's, so it's a four-day race where the first day is a four- a is a 5k the okay. second day is a 10k the third day is a half marathon and the fourth day is a full marathon <laughs> uh, i don't even i don't have aspirations that high i'll be entirely honest that's nuts in you're, the you're, best possible way you're, you're, i mean i'm sure you're going i'm going to need a wheelchair after i'm yeah, done I'm just to get me around so <laughs> that sounds like hard work but yeah, it is. super worth it yep it, it's completely worth it it will be <laughs> if okay. anybody wants to you know it'll follow me at my uh, yes. social media uh, post so i am on instagram uh, uh amputee 81 warrior is my tag very fitting. I like it. Yeah. I'm not as social as this amazing person right here. She pro you know, oh, provides thanks. all such amazing resources, but you can follow my page. Of course, you can hit me up with questions. I'd be happy to answer anything they, you know, that you have. Yeah. Uh, I'll pop that up on screen. And also, I mean, he posts uh, pictures and videos all the time of doing crazy stuff in the CrossFit gym, which personally to me, it's very inspirational. So go check him out. Well, Joshua, thank you so much for chatting with me today and oh, taking the time. It's been It was my pleasure. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> amazing to meet you as well. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here Definitely. and thanks for listening today guys i really appreciate you guys taking a few minutes out of your day to spend them here with us love you guys i'm thinking about you and i'll see you in the next video bye, bye guys i think our uh, our poor significant others are yes are they're hating us it's like god how much longer seriously right are you still talking <laughs> <laughs>